Recording in progress. Vacation. Okay. Good. Oh, and then uh, for everyone that missed it, we uh, fixed our bad Wi Fi problem. We think. We think. So hopefully the video is actually, uh, you know, you could actually watch it and understand what we're saying and actually see things this time. Right. Now, so even if it's not like 100% perfect, it's way better already. Yeah. Yeah. So no, we're getting we're getting 60 megabytes up and 10 or no 60 down and 10 up which is extraordinary so all right and, and then it was already miracle then a quick introduction for uh, for everybody mm -hmm. uh, i'm dennis hayes i'm a woodworker yeah ed Rosardi, woodworker john rivers woodworker <laughs> <laughs> that's simple a uh, disclaimer what we do what we show here is what what we do you know take it for what it's worth uh um it, it's uh what, what do we call it a, a non-responsibility disclaimer or whatever just be safe and uh, uh have fun yeah and then uh oh and i'm kevin hayes over hiding over yeah, here again yeah, yeah. Uh, i think I, yeah hello <laughs> if, if we had a we, we do have a wide angle camera you could we might be able to get you in there yeah not enough room on that side yeah, okay. <laughs> uh so let's get started what uh who wants to go first with uh what we're talking about uh, I'll, I'll you know last week we kind of talked about uh, uh door latch or uh, uh, drawer pulls and a few other things card scrapers uh, i've got a an eight minute uh video on how i deal with my card scrapers uh and uh then i also have another little one about uh what i use for drawer or door cabinet pulls and openers uh, and Ed's got a couple of his, he'll show you and talk about the, his, how he does it. And then Joan, you have, uh, you're going to show, if you remember from a little while ago, uh, he did a prototype rocking chair. Well, he's actually making the chair now and he's got a bunch of pieces that he's going to show uh, mm -hmm. either Updates. before or after the, whatever you want to do before mm -hmm. or after the mm -hmm. presentation or. George yeah, we'll, Lutz, you're going to talk about George Lutz? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. That as well. So. Uh, so do we want to go straight to the uh, which the card scraper? Oh, yeah, go to the card scraper, and then we they'll get us started. Is that this one right here? Yeah. Okay. And so let me. Uh, and like I said, it, it's really tough doing videos by yourself. There we go. Uh, first thing, can everyone see the green card scraper? Yes. Okay. All right. I think we had that problem last time where we started something and no one we okay. didn't know. <laughs> then, uh, all right. So. Okay. Now this is a card scraper. I don't know if you're how familiar you are, and this is what it. Uh, well, you, you'll see. This is what it does. Uh, it's a basic tool. Everybody, I guess, the new woodworkers are always uh, intrigued with the card scrapers. Uh, and again, this is just a little bit of a, an intro and then I, come on, come on, there you go. The first step is to file a perfect 90 degree uh, edge. Uh, I use a regular, just a metal file. And it, it, you might think it's difficult to hold that at 90, but you can feel it when it's cutting a perfectly flat and straight. Mm -hmm. Kevin, can you move that menu bar up or? Yeah, I don't think they could see that. Okay, well, I, but, okay, I, if they can't we see We could it, see it. Okay, oh, no. there you go, there you go. All right, let me get that out of the way then. Yeah, and, and you notice my, my yeah, left hand is actually writing on the bench. Mm -hmm. And that's how I can really feel, and you can feel the edge when it uh, uh, when it's cutting nicely. It, it takes a little while. I'm putting a lot of force on it just just to make it dead flat. Okay, I guess I finished that one. Uh, and pretty much like chisels, I use the same process. And I would say it takes about as long as I'm doing it in this video. Once you get a good metal edge on it or a file edge, then the the sharp the stones just kind of make it a little bit better. 
I, I don't even know where. It, oops, sorry about that. Okay. What kind of stone is that that you use? That's just an old carborundum, uh, uh, fine and coarse. Okay. This one I inherited a long time ago. That's my 600 uh, diamond bought from Rockler. Uh, a little expensive, but I use it for multi purpose. I use it to flatten my, my water stones and you know this, this kind of stuff. That is the 600. It has a, a 250 and a 600 side. <clears throat> and then we again it's just like my same procedure with the uh uh oh i got did it uh all right we did the diamond now a little bit of oil i i just i don't mind using a little oil on that and that that oil can is probably older than i am <laughs> stuff, stuff lasts forever there's a wire edge that forms when you uh uh file or or uh, sharpen, and I use a, uh, a a drill bit for the burnisher, and that's simply kind of rubbing the edge flat. I just use a large that's a half inch uh, drill bit. You just need a little bit as long as the steel is harder than the uh, card scraper. You'll raise a burr. That's the whole purpose of this is raising a little burr. I was going to have Joan draw a little graphic. Uh, of doing that, but I, I didn't busy working. Okay, now we actually, we're, we're gonna raise the burr. Notice it's down a little bit on the left. There you go. And then you slide it through, fairly good pressure. And you can feel it. If it feels really smooth, you're, you're, if you got it. If it still feels kind of crunchy, you just do it with about the, okay, now the other side, I guess I got that one good. You do both sides. Now, normally I would do all four sides and sometimes I do the short ends, but I, I don't do that on this. And that's, that's about all it takes. So you're not putting an edge on this card scraper? No, you're, you're raising a burr. Interesting. Uh, oh. the, after it's, it's sharpened correctly, it should create a shaving, not dust. And you'll see those are those are shavings, a little bit of dust, but they are shavings. And it gets super hot if you uh, it'll burn your thumbs if you're not careful. How true. <laughs> okay. Now, in addition to card scrapers, there's also I I kind of. Uh, equate that or there's a, uh, there's cabinet scrapers i'm sure you've heard of in my world the card scraper is this and a cabinet scraper is a, a a device that holds a card scraper the first one i have is the one this guy here which i got 20 30 years ago and uh, he, he's pretty good I, he wasn't set up perfectly it wasn't perfectly flat but you can you can remove some wood with that thing you can get in a hurry. This is how Ed does it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're cutting some good shavings. Is there a line across there deliberately? So yeah, that, I, that, I'll explain. This, oh. this is a piece I'm working on. This is my the other cabinet scraper. Now, this is what I use to remove glue with. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can put a lot of effort, get rid of a lot of uh, it. Uh, you can remove a lot of wood in a hurry. And there they are, and that's pretty much it. Simple, basic device. But wait a minute, but wait. <laughs> uh, All right. Um, so, uh, so some questions though is, uh, who here has never used a card scraper? <laughs> really? No. <laughs> I don't even know where my card scraper is. Does anybody gonna... use a buggy whip anymore? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I uh, because uh, one of the questions that a lot of people have is why, what's the purpose of a card scraper when you have perfectly good sanders? There, there is a a group or there's a a group of people who prefer the finish of a cut edge, like a planed edge, 
versus the sanded edge. Now we're we're talking real minor, insignificantly small differences, but some people just prefer the cut edge as opposed to the sanded edge. Mm -hmm. um, hey, I see Andrew. You, I think guy I work with. Uh, I think he would. There you go. That that's my my friend. Nice. He, uh, he's an excellent hand woodworker. He'll use a machine like I do, but I think he cuts beautiful dovetails. And hopefully, we'll get you to show your work uh, on these in a couple of weeks, Andrew. So I won't put you on the spot now. Uh, but some people just prefer it. I and, use them on guitar necks. And and uh, the yeah, the card scraper is really good because you can you can form it and stuff. You mm -hmm. can do the same thing with sandpaper. Uh, it's just the difference between cutting the uh, the wood fiber as a, opposed to abrading it. So I use it to get right into the corner of like ninety degrees boxes or whatever, right where you can't really get the sandpaper perfectly in the corner. It, it, another reason, mm -hmm. uh, but you kind of have to make the commitment: Are you going to have cut surfaces to finish, or are you going to have sanded surfaces to finish? Because you can see a a slight difference in the, uh, uh, if you have one area that is planed or scraped, uh, and then a, pair, a portion of the same top that's, that's sanded, uh, you can see the difference. So again, we're talking, you know, uh, tiny percentages better or differences. Just and the there, way it There was no, you didn't put an angle or anything. No, perfectly, perfectly 90 degrees. Um, I don't know. Let me let me see if I can. Here's I'm going to do this real fast. How thick was your card scraper? Probably a sixteenth of an inch. Yeah. So do you sharpen the really thin ones differently? No, it's all the same. And what I just did, this is the burr right here. I should have. I should, Joan, why didn't you? You know, you you got skills. You should have. You should have oh, told me. He's okay. busy making his rocking chair. Okay. Yeah, he's busy. Now, can you can you see that? I should have, you see that the burr, that's what the burnisher does. It actually rolls that edge into an extraordinarily sharp uh, cutting blade, even though you can't, yeah, I mean, I, if you slid it across your finger, it'd cut, yeah. but you, yeah. you, you, if you just touch it, you can't. And it, it's, it, uh, Andrew, how, how, what do you think that, that, the burr, I mean, it's only a, a few thousandths of an inch uh, past the, the flat surface. Yeah, I mean, I can definitely feel it. Um, yeah. Actually, last night was one of the first times I've actually used it. Um, and like, I think Kenny, you were saying, it was, I had some squeeze out, like on this 90 degree right here from glue. Right. And it worked great, like getting that, like all cleaned up. And so that was a really nice yeah. feature of it that, I kind of figured it out and uh, yeah, I like them. <laughs> yeah, I, I think they're, you know, they're handy to have. And uh, I do use mine a lot for scraping glue. Um, like I said, I prefer my drum sander, but uh, it, it is something that it's handy to know how to do. Yep. The other comment that I would make guys is you can usually get them as a, a set of multiple different shapes and sizes. Yeah. And they're just, for the right job, they're just you know peaches. The right, they're, they're, they make the day. They make your day. Yeah. Now, I, I agree. I've got I've got the set and I've got the little the what tiered or whatever its shape is. The goose, uh, goose, um, goose neck or whatever. But how the heck do you sharpen those? Same way. <laughs> You're a better man than I. <laughs> well, I've got a goose neck and I I keep it sharp. I do sharpen it and. It's, basically the same way except that i'm using a uh, a half round file yeah yeah you're on a curve yeah other than that it's basically the same thing yeah. using the burnisher yeah uh, cool i i again I, i've always said how am i going to do this ah it's too much trouble <laughs> <laughs> go have a cup of coffee all right uh so the next uh, subject uh did we want to talk about the Everyone, want, do, you want to, do we want to do another video or talk about the drawer? Well, I, I, how about we'll, let's turn it over um, to, to Ed.
Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to talk about drawer pulls, handles. Um, I would say on the market right now, there are probably about 50,000 different drawer pulls you can pick from. I brought over a small assortment of wood ones. You know, there's solid brass, there's um, plated different colors. Um, <clears throat> but before we get into it, I think the secret is to stand back and look at your project and be creative and say, what do I want to do with this to accent the piece where it really stands out. Uh, anybody can go down to the Home Depot, whatever, and buy Locker. a couple of drawer pulls and slap them on there. But nobody's going to say, wow, when they look at your, your project. So think in terms of being an artist here, you know, like um, something a little different. Um, and, you know, the good thing about drawer pulls, they don't use a lot of wood. So if you make a mistake or you don't like it, you haven't spent a boatload of money on wood. But I have a, an assortment of a couple different <clears throat> types that I had in the shop. And um, I don't know if you guys can see these very oh, well. Yeah, just hand them, hand them one Can you over. zoom in? Uh, actually, yeah, zoom in, yeah. You know, we do have a zoom thing here now. Hey, this is big time. Maybe if I could figure there it out. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Can you guys see that a little better? Or oh, that's all it does right there. Okay. But these these are basically, and I'm going to be honest, I didn't make these. There are companies that uh, these are walnut, cherry, uh, various shapes. And what I'm looking for here is when I buy these, is what can I do to this knob yeah. to enhance Take it the wood even off. more? And just slide it. Slide this forward. There we go. How's that? Oh, there, okay. There we go. There. How's that? A little bit better. Okay. Okay. Um, these are all turn knobs. Uh, some of them have a, a stem on the back side, which I can chuck up in my lathe and and uh, I'll modify them if I want to. But they're not bad. Um, <laughs> uh, they don't stand. They're called they dominoes. Stand they're yeah, called a uh, round domino here. But, uh, and then some of them have uh, where you would uh, put a little screw on the backside or actually drill a hole and put your own little plug in there to mount them. Uh, I purchased some of them that are sort of mid-century modern or something. They've got a little insert in the backside that you can put a screw in. These are actually purchased, they're made in Denmark. And I've made a template um, and use a plunge router and mill out this pocket and these drop right inside that. These are available at, at Rockler. Um, they still carry them. Um, uh, I think they're a couple of dollars a piece. They're not bad. Now these are more of a, um, a, a very interesting uh, sculpted handle. They are made by a company called Manzoni. Rockler also sells these. These are about $45 a piece but they're beautifully finished. Um, and just envision that if you were to mount that up against a flat surface, and these are also considered mid-century modern handles. Uh, there's a smaller one here, a little kind of the same version, but uh, they come in walnut. What do, you, what do you think those cost? These are $45, maybe 35 for this one here. Wow. You know, if you're doing a cabinet with like 10 drawers, you're looking at 350, $400 worth. So um, again, can I make these? I probably could. Do I want to, to make one of them? Not really, you know, uh, why go through all the effort of setting up router bits and sculpting for an hour? It's a choice that you have to make. Um, I'm gonna bring over a keepsake box that, um, I've made a number of these for the grandkids and uh, nieces and nephews and everybody in the family. And basically uh, the lid is laser engraved. Uh, it has Brussel hardware and it has a latch on. Whoops, can't go that high. Um, can you tilt the camera a little bit or I, I oh yeah, okay. Yeah, it's back down a bit. I'm trying to show. I'm trying to show this handle, but uh, 
Oh, well, maybe there. Well, basically I milled a pocket up underneath here and I just sculpted this little handle. And basically it allows to just push the latch in and lift the lid. So I, I just had some little tapered sides and sculpted on the bottom for your finger here. And again, um, maybe a penny's worth of wood. Um, so, but the beauty of the keepsake boxes is the tray. Okay. Nice fit, Ed. That was fun. Can you do it again? It's, oh, you want to do it again? Just one more. One more time, yeah. Hydraulics. I seem to remember, uh, Andrew, you, yours, your drawer kind of did the same thing, didn't it? Yeah, I had a little bit of that, not that smooth. <laughs> well, the secret to this whole thing is it's been polished to 4,000 grit and it has an oil finish with wax in it. And another trick that I've learned to do with drawers and the, is you do not want a straight corner in these straight corners. I, I just break the edge a little tiny bit because if it if there's any binding in there, that corner will catch. But with a very subtle radius, it's probably like a 64th of an inch. It's just with a sander, just or hand sanding. You get rid of that friction point right in the corner. And I do that on all the drawers that I make. Um, um, and it eliminates, uh, I would say the play in this one is about like total of 64th, about a maybe a 64th on each side or something. But again, I have a big head sanding machine and I'll go over and just barely kiss it off and fit it. And then when uh, when they're sanded off, uh, I allow, that's another thing. You have to allow, uh, don't run a 120 grit sander on this thing because then you got to sand and sand and get it up that you're going to take off more so i get it where it it's a little bit snug and then i sand it and generally i don't have a problem and these are all hand cut dovetails Good they're hand cut with a killer <laughs> dovetail picture <laughs> Ed, uh is there a competitor that makes a comparable hardware to bruso um no I, i'm yeah, not, yeah that I'm, so. not that I'm aware of. Um, I haven't really researched it that much, but again, they're pricing themselves out of the market as far as I'm concerned. And um, it's good stuff. I've got yeah. their templates. Um, I don't know how they make the hinges, but they're probably plus or minus a half a thousandth of an inch. I, it's unbelievable with their template that I get done milling the pocket and the, and the, um, the hinges fit in here perfectly. I don't know if you can see that. Um, uh, there's there's no gap. There's no gap at all. But this is all done with templates and a router. Um, but um, uh, Rockler sells Brusso and they sell some knockoffs that are horrible. They're just- yeah, I mean, that, that, that clasp on the front of that case is like $37. And the hinges are about the same. So you're exactly. adding $70, $80. And the just, laser engraving is 75 bucks. Yeah. And and I got two hundred even started with a I got 250 bucks in this box just in material. And I do sell them. And when I tell people what they cost, they say, Did you mean $80 instead of 800 It takes about 20 hours to make one of these to get this, this degree of perfection. It's sort of what is it, 10 degree ish? No, <laughs> just joking. That's, I, I, if I put my name on it, I want it to be good, but um, people look at this as a box. It isn't a box, really. It's, it's my baby. Yeah. By the way, that's my wife's name, Jenny. This is hers. <laughs> that's a work of art. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank Ed, Ed, that was fascinating. It's always fun to see what Ed does. I, I'm just totally. Uh, why don't you show the the second the second little video I did is just of some of my. They're not door drawer pulls. They are. Uh, I couldn't get a good picture of my drawer. Uh, okay, actually, this is what I'm working on. Uh, 
and I'll, I'll show that uh, later. So go ahead and start it. That we'll we'll get into the now mm. after this guy here, you'll see my basically my TV cabinet. It'll this will go away in a minute, and I'll, I'm going to showcase the uh, the box underneath in a after the video is over. Come on, Where? there you go. Now these are my uh, door openers. You can see mm -hmm. this is one the same piece, and everyone has a different. Uh, well, this is this is on the left side, okay. And come on, and that, that that's in the center. You see that little a little tiny dip, and then a little bit of raised guy right there mm. more than enough mm -hmm. to open it up like a thumb hole sort and then of. this is the other one a little bit uh, rougher and cruder but the main reason at the very last oh my, no this is my little latch my little uh, wooden latch that works really good all these are handmade mm -hmm. work really good i use magnets to hold the doors and i put bumpers now see this this i think it'll end that drawer pull is Ed's design. That is what, you know, remember those? I mean, you, that, that's, that's, I, I stole it from Ed. Uh, it elegantly, there, uh, how would you make that? Or how, we, was it kind of easy to make or was it? Well, it's basically made on a, I do mine on a router table and I have a cold bit and a big round over bit and, but start out with a big block of wood and uh, do the basic shape on it and then just cut them off to the length that you want yeah. and you know mill out a little pocket on the top of the drawer and fit it in there and um it's again um now his the sides on his seem to be vertical you could taper them a little yeah. bit round the bottom off make make the bottom a little bit round or something but you, you can do anything you want um whatever uh, as they say float your boat you know so Okay, now right in front of me, you want to do the same thing and don't move. I'm going to put this guy right here and then uh, zoom it in and I'll get this guy. Okay, now this is this is what I've been doing. This is eucalyptus. I don't know how you can, That's beautiful. Uh, how you can see it. Uh, it is hand cut dovetails. These guys right here are all hand cut. It's tough, as Joan will attest later. And I also, we're talking about drawer. Uh, okay, there's my little uh, drawer pull. It's just a little tiny piece that is dowel or doweled in. Mm -hmm. But this is what I use if I. Uh, this is my drawer. Okay, see, I have wooden extensions drawer. So one of the things I always hated is sloppy drawers, and it has very little mm -hmm. movement. But you know that the drawer is open like over 50% or even more, and it's still really uh, uh, rigid. rigid or it, it's not sloppy. Sturdy. It, and it's sturdy. Isn't that cool? I'm going to get a little side view. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just turn, turn the, don't, the, there's little dowels on there that can't. So just spin the sky around like that. Now these these are uh, actually attach it. These little pins will attach it to the uh, the base that it, that it will ride on. Yeah, and slide it out so people can see the. Uh... Yeah. I could probably open this up another inch, so it, it's just in the process of being. Uh... And if you notice, on the 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 sides right here. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but I, instead of doing any fancy thing, I just put dowels in the end to, to keep the drawer from uh, being ripped apart. So, okay, now, Joan. Ah, what I've been working on. Um, for those of you who saw the, uh, it was our design episode, I was showing the- uh, Show the video here real quick. Oh yeah, yeah. show the video. <laughs> This chair I sketched out and decided to make a prototype out of this pine. My original plan was to keep one half blocky like that 
and then the other half sculpted and finished. But you know, I, I got impatient. I thought, why not spend this time on the actual chair? I think I'm, I'm close enough. So I decided to do this with eucalyptus. The only thing that the prototype does not show um, is the actual joinery. On the prototype, it's just glued and screwed together. But so I dissected my prototype. This piece was the seat. One of them, there's two of these, and then the, both legs shoot out from there. So I took this apart, used this as a template, and cut out some eucalyptus. And I started with this lap joint here. Nothing's glued up yet. Wouldn't that be called bridle? That's a bridle. That's what I thought, but I was going to let Jones slide. <laughs> I've been calling it a, a, a lap, but it, it, it's a bridle. I call this a dovetail. Got it. At 10 ish degree angle. 10 ish. It's so, dovetail ish. <laughs> Check that's that out. a real dovetail. So the legs were sticking out at a 10 ish degree angle. So I just copied that angle and made myself a little template. So these are hand cut on a bandsaw. At a boy. Hand cut, <laughs> literally. What, whose side are you on? Un you don't like, Dad doesn't like power tools anymore. He's, he's changed. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. I just made a quick. Tennish. Tennish degrees. A, a for clever. And every leg will be cut to exactly 10 inch degrees. So that's the important thing. And then the, where's that other half of the uh, clamp? I, I set it over here. One that's, that's not glued mm -hmm. up. Yeah. This, this, uh, this eucalyptus is not trifle in weight. It's quite heavy. So I was playing around with how I'm gonna clamp it. This looks like it'll work. I also traced over the, um, shape it's going to have. In that video, it had the uh, four backrests lined up. So in this one, I'm actually going to have it sculpted in. Can I see that? Let's turn it sideways. My little line drawing. Yeah. Well, Ned, you know, next week, we'll, uh, you can show the further along. Yeah. Can you show that rocking chair? Can you show the rocking chair again? Oh, the video? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So the things I want to change, the front legs are a little thin for me, so I made them wider and I'll sculpt them down. That leg right there. It's got the, what did you call it? The shack ankle looking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Skinny ankles. <clears throat> And then we can see how this joint fit. So the first one I cut, it's the right side, one out of three. And is this right or left? Right. It will go, it just have to get at the right angle. At the right humidity. <laughs> Don't force it because uh, he just cut these uh, uh, two hours ago. I've never seen a ten thousand dollar rocking chair before. Neither of all. <laughs> I actually, yeah, they they are around. Yeah, it could have it could have moved a little bit. That eucalyptus is. Uh, well, it's we've had a stuff. temperature change of about 40 degrees in a couple of days here. Yeah. So, yeah, no, yeah. Don't, don't force it. All right. And humidity, too. It rained today. Well, there you have it. It's moved. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what happens when you hand cut things on a bandsaw sometimes. Yeah. 
You need a little bo bottle mallet. Oh, oh there you get it from the other side. Yeah, put it in from the right side. <laughs> the wrong keeper. way, Jim. <laughs> Joe was concerned. Uh, he wants to make sure that it will hold 500 pounds live weight. <laughs> so I think it'll. I think it'll work. And then this coat will be cut at this angle, and I'll do another. The back leg is the same way through this joint. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, looking good. And then. Uh, let's, uh, Anyone have uh, questions about these subjects we've talked about? Yeah. How about uh, the poles? Back to the poles. Okay. I see you guys use the uh, poles mostly that are proud of the project. Does anybody make their own poles that are flush? Like uh, my cabinet doors, all right? I use a thumbnail on the bottom edge and maybe the last five inches i leave it square and then i come in with a round over bit and then there's a finger joint a finger pull bit with the router and you use that underneath so this way you don't see anything there's your finger pull and you just pull it forward okay also uh drawers drawers in a uh in cabinets i use i make them you know it's square but using that finger pull bit, I make a jig and it goes in. You leave the last eighth of inch above your wood and it's totally closed off. But you put your finger in there and it pulls out. It, it glides nice and easy. It's very easy to do. I, I try and stay away from the uh, ones that are proud. I, I would say 90% of my drawer pulls are flush or hidden or underneath or right. you know uh, non-protruding this this old yeah. guy here is an exception um i, I was going to do something a little trickier but i just like the the cleaner but 90 percent because it, it you know it's just another step of having to turn or make a little knob so well there's pros and cons in my opinion about that finger pull you're talking about Back in the 70s or 80s, that was a big thing in California to make kitchen cabinets with that finger pull. Well, over a period of time, my wife's wet hands and dirty hands are on the cabinet and they were lacquered. It wasn't very appealing to look at the kitchen cabinets after a while. So I prefer to have something that you latch on to. Latch on to. That's all. It's just, uh, you know, dry hands, fine. But when they've got flour and all, all, all over them and you're trying to wipe it off after over a period of time, it can distract from the look of your cabinet. That's all. Yeah, kitchen cabinets right. versus. Well, even bathroom cabinets, you know, you're washing your hair or something and you all go to open it, your hands are wet mm -hmm. and uh, over a period of time. But that's just the opinion <laughs> of the group again. <laughs> that's why you use varnish. <laughs> Um, that seals it and anything gets on it, you just wipe and it comes off real quick. Uh, um, it, it'll eventually wear off and then it'll do exactly what, but uh, kitchen cabinets are a different category. I think it, you know, we, I think we, we yeah. could agree. Uh, the custom cabinets that we make uh, aren't subject to that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't have recessed pulls on my kitchen. I have metal cabinets or pulls on, on uh, that's just a there. personal thing yeah. yeah mine have lasted 15 years now so yeah, yeah. but i use hardwood i use that liptus yeah uh my rails and styles and then i used uh what the heck was it maple spalted maple for the two panels in each door uh -huh. love to see those and the contrast it, it looks beautiful in fact a lot of people say what the heck kind of wood is that? <laughs> They've never seen spalted maple before. Yeah. Oh. I do like spalted maple. Yeah. I like spalted anything. <laughs> See, I was wondering, Ed, could you do a demonstration on that one pole? I really like that. Which one? The, 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 
the one that um that that stole. <laughs> what? wait we lost you michelle no we didn't oh yeah, which specific the one? The one that Dennis stole, the one that you showed the picture yeah, you're, you're of. Yeah. Little, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll do a video on yeah. that one if you okay. want to. Okay, good good idea. Give me an excuse to go over to Ed's uh, shop. I mean, you need to pick up the uh, routers anyways, right? Yeah, I got to pick up the routers. Michelle, are you there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thought we lost you for a second there. Yeah. No, no, I think... I, no I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I think we got the uh, internet thing uh, sorted out. What do you guys think? We got the internet working? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Much Yay. better. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. One little glitch in the system. No. Uh, yeah, like the glitch. <laughs> uh, anyone else have uh, questions of any type? Or discussion? Andrew, discussion. are you still interested in buying some ebony? A small piece? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I still have it. <laughs> And I, uh, Andrew comes to my shop on Saturdays, but this last Saturday, Joan blew up my shop. Oh, it was Joan's fault, huh? Joan, yeah, Joan's fault. Uh, he was, it, it, it was kind of hot and he had the air conditioner on and he had the vacuum on <laughs> and he had, you know, grinding out. That was it. Well, you grinding know, out could some do real hard, hard uh, uh, redwood. Right? Yeah, I, I got, I got, I got 50 amps into the shop. And Joan was probably working on like 49. <laughs> and then he decided to turn on a flashlight or turn on something else. And it, Boom. I don't know what happened, but it's yes, Alexa for some music. And that was just too much. Yeah, he, he I, turned think on I, like, I think I hit the end grain on the redwood. That's what it was. <laughs> and and it actually what it, it burned out a uh, a little uh what's that thing? Uh surge oh, protector. Yeah, surge protector. And he, he thought he'd killed my shop. I, I thought he did too, but uh, we, we got it. In fact, if you, you can't see, but over there, there's an ugly wire hanging down that lights up this oh. <laughs> light right over us. <laughs> I've got to buy another. We were this shirt. close to digging up the conduit. Uh, I, uh, anyway, so now you know why you guys didn't come over on Saturday. Next time. What else, Kevin? Uh, well, uh, what should we talk about next week? What, does anyone have any requests for topics for next week? We got Ed's poll. Yep. Uh, I know there's questions still about cabinets, also about uh, you know making the seats, uh, but that takes a little more planning for that. Uh, and actually, Joan will eventually get to make yeah, he'll his, be sculpting yeah, a seat, sculpting yeah. a seat eventually here. So that might be the yeah. perfect time to talk about that. And well. I'll uh, I'll give kind of or uh, put put that uh, my video on the just just that little desk thing that I'm making that has the the drawer. This uh, one right here, right? Yeah. Then you then just stop it at the not not that one. No, that just happened. That's not a desk. Uh, da, yeah, that one there, and just go to the beginning. Okay, let me find it. Okay, I yeah, just go to the all the way to click on the front and then stop it. Right, all the way. Okay, that this guy next week uh, I'll 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 give an update on this. Uh, can everyone see the uh thing we're talking about? Yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'll give a little update on on the progress of this guy. Um that that is uh, a piece of uh eucalyptus on the top and the box that you saw earlier. And then uh, the, the frame is eucalyptus. The uh, drawer stuff is actually uh, walnut. Uh, now, the significance of this is that the eucalyptus that Joe and I are using was cut and harvested from the uh, Maloof Foundation property. Or the, the, uh, I got it about three or four years ago. And uh, it's been air drying and, and it's, it, it's just gnarly looking stuff. It's very uh, cool. And it, it, it I'm making this to sh to make a point that you can have some really terrible looking lumber and make something beautiful out of it. Uh, and I, I have actually got all of the the wood, the, the photos of the the wood that I actually started from, and it it's bad. But this is uh, a, an exercise in 
in using rescue wood, the worst that you could find. And all of this is from that wood. The walnut is also from locally sourced from uh, Alta D or uh, where's where that uh, Monrovia. So. Yeah, how, how thick was the top on that when you started to uh, chop it down? The, the, the piece of wood that I started off with was two inches. And that is? And that is about five eighths. Wow. Uh, but I'll, I'll show you the, the process that I went through to do it. <laughs> uh, and you, you remember Ed made a, a, a comment about it. what's that seam in the middle? Remember, there was a joint you, in you oh, yeah, the yeah. two and a half. You yeah, yeah. There, there's a whole oh, technique yeah. that, that I had to use to, to salve. I mean, if I hadn't done that, I, it, the wood have only been a quarter inch thick. The, oh, the warping oh, yeah. and winding was so bad that oh. I wanted to use that piece of wood. So <laughs> I'll go through that maybe next time and a couple others. And you dominoed it as well? Uh, that is dominoed. And then I'm going to inlay a, a, another support underneath it. That's what I was doing today. So you can domino a half inch piece of wood. Mm -hmm. That's five eighths. Okay, so it's way bigger than a half. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's where you draw the line. Is that yeah. five eighths? Eighth, eighth inch. Yeah. Eighth inch <laughs> draw the line somewhere, and that's it. Okay, so we'll we'll do more of that next week. Yep. I would like to applaud the efforts to improve the bandwidth. There was not one lockup tonight. Yeah, yeah, and the, that the, was man. It just changed the tempo of this meeting tremendously. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, now we get to start over again. Yep. I mean, we it, it was bad. Uh, we I only had sometimes 0.8 uh, megabytes per second going uh, or downloads, but now we got 60. Whew. Dang, and yeah. Well, I can remember when we had dial up. Oh yeah. <laughs> so now I'm going to put Andrew on the spot. Do you want to do a little uh, video on yours next week? On the the nightstand? On the nightstand? Well, it's done. At, I know. It's beautiful. It, Just showcase it. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's in the bedroom. Wife is using it. I told oh, her right. I have to take all her stuff out uh, next week. So you got on, <laughs> on Saturday, but she said that's okay. <laughs> So yeah, I think I think people would enjoy to see it and to you talk for you to talk about it too. It, it's it's extraordinary piece of furniture. So yeah, definitely. Well, as long as you don't get super busy this week with other things, you know. Yeah. And and make sure you talk about the drawer pull or the the slide pull. As long as I don't have a baby this week, that's what. I if you, if if you <laughs> the baby comes, all bets are off. Okay. <laughs> That's it. I'm done. Yeah. Um, oh, John. John I have I have one question. While I'm with the community of woodworkers, has anyone ever made a pool table? Nope. Nope. I put one together one time. <laughs> <laughs> I I played a few games. I thought about it, but uh, no. Or researched it. I bought one off of a friend of mine, and it was like in pieces in his backyard, and I put it together in my in my. I uh, wouldn't say we ever really got it rolling the way it was designed. Sounds like a good challenge, though. Yeah, it does. It's on my bucket list. I, yeah. I did. I got a commission for a, uh, a, co a a heavy coffee table, and the guy, the owner, wanted a slate top on it. And so I, I put slate tile, and he didn't like that. I did a few other things. And finally, I bought uh, two pieces of uh, pool table slate it, it comes in perfectly dead flat panels and they the four or, or six of them make what they use for the, oh, yeah. the, the pool table um there's a guy in uh in california who a uh, fairly well-known woodworker uh jory brigham he makes pool tables mm. and shuffle tables jory. and ping pong tables and all that kind of stuff so google him and you'll see his pool tables I'm sure there's plans on the internet too. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, wrap things up here and uh, we'll see everyone uh, next week. Yeah. I'm so glad the Thanks internet worked. Yep. And uh, great tonight. All right. Yeah, it was great. Okay. I'm going to try and find, what you think try and find the, the, of the item that I built. Uh, it was a bar. It comes up out of the floor on like a cog wheel on the sides and then opens up from eight to 14 feet. Wow.
I've got pictures of it. I got to find them though to uh, okay. put them on there. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Goodbye, Take guys. Care next, see you next week. All right. Yep. Again. Great to see y'all. Okay. okay.